Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a different video. We are going to get back to the normal sort of more traditional music tutorial videos next week, but I wanted to take some time to talk about the mentality of making music and the philosophy of being creative. And I've been making music now for about 15 years, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe more like 13 or 14, but I've been doing it for a long time and I've gone through a ton of struggles as a lot of musicians do when it comes to consistency and making music. The cycle of getting motivated to make something, working on a project, getting really excited about it, listening back on it some period of time later, thinking it sounds like absolute doo-doo, getting super depressed and then not making any more music for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, uh, is a cycle that I think is pretty universal on some level and it's one that I want to talk about solutions or at least mentalities that have helped me avoid that cycle a little bit. So when it comes to consistency, I think the thing for me in the beginning that I focused a lot on was how to find motivation, how to be consistent and how to constantly feel motivated. I knew the feeling of musical depression, of not feeling motivated, of not feeling creative, of feeling like this was a chore as opposed to something that I wanted to do. And I I have spent so much time in the beginning uh, when it came to watching videos online or doing reading on creativity and consistency I and reading self-help books and, and other sorts of things to try and get myself to be more consistent with music making. Um, I found that I knew the feeling I wanted to avoid was the sort of musical depression. The everything I make sucks. I can't make anything original. Everything I make is just a rip off of someone else. I have no idea who I am as a musician. People talk about finding your own voice, finding your own lane in the music industry and f knowing what you want to do and sticking with it and being consistent and opening up your DAW each and every day or at least five, six days out of the week. I wanted to find that motivation. When I listen to a song I really like, when I watch a tutorial where I learn something new, when something happens in life that I'm just feeling motivated, when I see that a, uh, something I've posted has gotten a bunch of streams or something like that, that, mo that feeling of motivation was one that I was constantly searching for. And what I've realized recently is that this was just as much a part of the problem as the musical depression. And so what I want to talk about today is how the solution to consistency is not motivation. At least for me, that's what I've discovered and what I believe to be true. And when I look at people who I view as my idols in the music world, people who are really consistent, you look at their musical catalog and it, they just have album after album. Or I am inspired by a lot of film composers. They've scored so many movies and maybe they've released independent albums on their own. And so much of it is high quality music. And yet when I go and watch interviews with them and people ask them questions about how are they so consistent, they just sort of seem to be like, well, this is what I do and, you know, I like making music and so I just do it. And it's like, okay, well, that's great, but I like making music too, but I have released one album in the past 15 <laughs> years that I've been doing this and that only came a couple of months ago. How the heck did that happen? How the heck did I get to a point where I could actually release an album? Well, it took this mentality shift of stopping chasing motivation and stop chasing excitement when it comes to music making. It's the feeling of, I'm the next Mozart. This song that I'm working on right now is gonna be the one that blows up. That feeling is just as much the enemy as everything I make sucks, nothing I make is original. They're both opposite sides of the same problem. And this is looking for external motivators. This is relying on external things to get us to make music. So I think those of us who keep coming back to music making, I don't need to convince any of you that being creative has inherent value in it. But one of the traps that we fall in in today's world, and for a lot of reasons when it comes to social media and streaming and the financial uh, incentives to make it in the music industry, to do it in a certain amount of time, et cetera, et cetera, the entanglement between personal creativity and external success are just totally intertwined. And so I think what we get confused by is the sense that motivation and success are the same thing, that consistency is equivalent to constantly feeling motivated to get up and make something and feel super excited about music on a day in and day out basis. That feeling you get when you listen to your favorite music, the sort of tingly, this is exactly what I was meant to do is make music like this feeling is kind of 
the enemy. In the same way that when you listen to something and you're in a down state of mind and you're listening to something of your favorite music and you say, I could never make this, I could never be this original, this comparison, this looking to external motivators is the problem as to why you're not consistent. So why is this? What's going on here? Well, I think we all know why it's bad to be in a state of sort of musical depression. I mean, there's we could talk about general depression, but I'm talking about the sort of musical depression of um, fe this feeling that I think is pretty universal amongst creative people, but definitely amongst musicians of, this is what I was meant to do. I've found something that I love, but I almost never do it. Or I spend less than half of my free time actually making music. I'm never consistent. I never stick with a project. I never finish things. I never release my projects. I never actually release the album that I say I'm going to release, et cetera, et cetera. I don't need to convince anyone that that gets in the way of consistency, of opening up your DAW every day, of opening up your music notation software every day, of practicing your instrument every day. No one needs to be convinced that that's the problem. What I do need to convince you of is the excitement you get to go make music being part of the problem. So here's how I like to think about it. And actually I got this, it, this was really clearly laid out for me in watching um, some content from Dr. K who does Healthy Gamer where he talks about mental health in general. But the principle he talks about is that he talks about excitement and motivation as actually just being the opposite of depression and low energy. And that if you think about them as opposites, what they really are doing are focusing your brain and your mind on something that you don't have right now. They're getting you excited for something or depressed at the lack of something. So when it comes to music, what I realized with my excitement about making music, with my motivation after watching a tutorial, was that I was excited and motivated by the thing that I had just consumed, or I was excited and motivated by the idea of becoming the type of artist that watching some interview or hearing some piece of advice that in my head became the idea of who I was going to be. And these are all external things. They're things I don't have right now. And so when you think about something you're excited for, let's say a graduation, your high school graduation or something, you're excited to graduate high school. The days leading up to your high school graduation, you're super excited. This is something that's definitively coming and you have an, a, a concrete idea of when it's going to happen. But excitement about releasing an album, let's say you commit to starting an album, you give yourself six months to work on this project. The excitement in the beginning is going to be really high, but the excitement you're feeling is the excitement of what it would feel like on release day. On release day, when you get a bunch of streams, when you've completed this album, when you have this sense of having given your all to something for six months and then you release it. That excitement you feel in the beginning is about the final product. It's not about the process and the mundane, boring, day-to-day uh, -day routine of working on music and very rarely finishing something or very rarely having a real breakthrough moment. That process is kind of boring and it's pretty, maybe not boring, but it's just routine. It's like brushing your teeth or something. There's no excitement in it. It's just a part of your day. So when you rely on excitement and motivation and you don't get the thing, which is what you're looking for is the, the feeling of releasing your project immediately or quickly within a week or two, you're going to give up because you're relying on that feeling of excitement to make music, and you have the idea in your head that you should feel excited every day to make music, and then when you don't, you feel like a failure. You feel like you're doing creativity wrong in some way. This is all just speaking for myself. I think having talked to other people and listening to other people talk on this subject, this is a pretty common and universal feeling, but I'd be definitely interested to hear opinions or experiences of other creatives and other musicians down in the comments. But yeah, so so I hope that makes sense. That that musical depression and a sense of having no self-worth as a musician is about the idea that let's just use the album because it's such an easy way to to make this point. The musical depression is I could never release an album. Every album I ever release will suck. It'll get no streams. No one's going to talk about it. Um, nothing, it won't give me any sense of fulfillment, creative fulfillment. It's just a rip off of someone else. I might as well just be doing something else with my time. That feeling sucks. But musical excitement... Um, I'm going to release an album that's going to make me the next big famous thing and it's going to prove to the whole world that I'm a musical genius is a really addictive feeling. But it is 
Okay, so that it is a really... <laughs> my computer went to sleep for a second. It is a really addictive feeling, but it's a temporary one. And it's also an attachment to something which is not immediate and controllable. It's not actually an excitement about consistency. It's an excitement about a finished product. So if you think of sort of musical depression being down here and the sort of musical excitement you feel when you think about releasing an album or you think about making the song that's finally going to be the one that blows up or you think about learning some new skill that's finally going to make music fun, finally going to make you a pro, they exist on opposite ends of the spectrum. And what so much and what we do with consuming tutorial video after podcast, after stream, after stream, after stream of being lost in this world of looking at other musicians nonstop and listening to creative people talk nonstop is that we spend so much time fluctuating between down here and up here that we never, we don't spend nearly enough time in the middle zone, which is where consistency comes from. And the middle zone is one that is neither excitement based nor sort of, uh, you know, finding motivation in response to depression based. Uh, or that sort of musical depressive state. The sort of middle path here um, is one that's about a commitment to the process of getting good at something. And this is where it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to figure out what the mentality is you need to have to find that middle ground. This is not a quick thing. It does not come easy and it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of effort. But somehow, some way, if you want to be consistent in making music, you need to find the motivation to, <laughs> let me not use the word motivation. You need to find a reason to believe that the best, the peak of music making, the thing that's as good as it gets is the day-to-day -day mundane routine. I'm going to set two hours to open up my DAW Monday through Friday, and I'm going to do it and it's gonna be a homework assignment. What I make today might be crap. What I make today might be great. What I make today will probably be very, very average. And I'm just gonna keep going, and I'm gonna treat it like an assignment. At the end of the week, I'm gonna have 30 seconds worth of music done, or whatever your you know chart of keeping progress is. But I heard somewhere a quote from someone, and, and I hope someone knows which quote I'm talking about, because I can't, I can't remember who said it or exactly how it goes in a way that I can Google it. But someone at some point said, and I believe it was a musician, said something along the lines of, the more arbitrary rules you make in your life, the more consistent you're going to be. And so what I mean by this is that in order to make music every day, for me, the mindset that has unlocked the ability to actually get in a state where I'm working on it on a routine, regular basis is a commitment to the idea that the meaning of creativity is the process of getting really, really good at something. And what is the process of getting really, really good at something? Well, let's, instead of thinking about creating new music, because that's a really sort of daunting creative thing, let's think about learning something like the piano, which I've got in front of me. You can't see it on the camera. But if you think about the, the learning curve that it comes from learning piano, right? You start off really, really slow. I, many of us have seen these learning curves. You start off really, really slow. It's really frustrating in the beginning. Then you spike up. You spike up and then you slow, oh, maybe I'll put a curve on the screen because I don't think that, that came through with my finger. But the point being you start slow and then there's a, there's a fairly long process of sort of being in an intermediate where you're making a lot of progress. But then once you get towards mastery, it starts to really slow down. But this process to get really good at piano, anyone who's in the elite of pianists will tell you it just takes years and years of playing the same five second bit a hundred times a day and the next five second bit a hundred times a day. And then you play those two bits back to back a hundred times and over and over and over. And it's not exciting. The feeling of being in a concert hall of playing in front of a bunch of people, uh, playing something that sounds really good as a complete piece is the exception. The process of getting good is about a commitment to the idea that it, what is meaningful is this repetitive commitment to something which is in and of itself sort of just routine and uh, practice and it's work. It is a commitment to the idea that creativity and getting good at something requires a lot of work. And that for me, the where the meaning comes from in all of this is the idea that a life committed 
to consistently practicing my craft of music making, a life where I spend years and years and decades and decades getting as good as I can get, not to be better than someone else, not to compare myself to others, not to get to a point where I'll reach X level of success, but to get to a point where I know within myself that I have reached the top whatever percentile of composers or music makers in the world is something that is meaningful for me. That commitment to a process is really meaningful. What does that mean? It means finding a middle path where I'm not relying on making music because of my excitement and motivation to have something that sounds really good and great, nor am I um, trying to constantly come out of those low dips. What it means for me is doing something which might on its face value sound inherently wrong and uncreative, but it means treating my creative work like it is a homework assignment. I have a calendar that says this week, this month, this is the time I'm going to spend making music. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend this much time studying. I'm going to spend this much time practicing piano. I'm going to spend this much time composing original stuff. I'm going to spend this much time learning, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I have long-term goals, which are a little bit more vague, short-term goals, which are much more specific. But my goals are never about create music that sounds really good, get this number of streams, get that number of subscribers, be this famous, compose a block, you know, be the, be the uh, composer for a blockbuster film. Those things are all out of my control. The way to be consistent is to make all of my goals immediate and controllable for me. And so what that means is X number of hours practicing, X number of hours composing original music, and a commitment to finishing things regardless of how bad they sound. Treating each piece as a homework assignment has helped to remove the pressure of creating anything which is in and of itself great. It's just, it's Thursday. I said I was going to compose a minute of, uh, of music in the style of like an, of a generic action cue from a movie. I've got to get it done. This is my homework assignment. If it's only 70% as good as what I think I could make, so be it. Sometimes when you're in school, you have to turn in assignments that you don't think are as good as you could make. But you create all these arbitrary rules about your schedule, your calendar, and you follow through on them from a commitment to the idea of what it is to be great at something, what it is to get really good at something, is this process of the boring day to day to day to day, just practice. Practice, 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 practice. And so for me, this is the middle ground. And it's taken so long to commit to this way of thinking about music, to think of it something as sort of each day in and of itself is kind of meaningless. Whether or not I make something good or bad today doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that I follow through on finishing my sort of assignments. Sticking to my calendar has been the thing that's allowed me to make music every day. And it also... When I finish something that sounds like crap, I'm not going to lie and sit here and say like, oh, I don't care because, you know, it's whatever, whatever. But it allows me to – what it, it still doesn't feel good. I don't feel good when I make something that I don't think sounds good. When I spend two days on something and wake up the following day and realize, oh, that sounds like absolute garbage. But then what this process of learning to find this sort of middle path of just treating this as work day to day to day, practice, practice, practice – the process of getting really good at something is the meaning, um, and that is entirely coming from within, then there's no external pressure to actually make anything great. The only pressure that comes from within is to be consistent. And so one of the, you know, the last things I'll say on this topic is that something which sounds really counterintuitive and really paradoxical is that when I'm having a rough day of music making, the thing I remember is that the most important thing about consistency actually is not has nothing to do with today. The most important thing with consistency is that I set myself up today to go back and be doing this again tomorrow, to come back and do it again tomorrow, to not set myself, send myself down the path of musical depression into a rut where I'm not going to open up my DAW, I'm not going to practice piano for multiple weeks or multiple months. That's way more important than whatever I do today. If I reach a burning out point today, if I reach a point where I'm so mad that everything I've made is such crap that I have to finish early, then that's what I have to do. But the most important thing is that I come back and try again tomorrow. And so I hope that makes sense. I hope that, um, you know, I, I haven't written out a script or anything. I hope some of the points I've made make sense are helpful. The other just quick note I'll add here 
is that so much of this, I think, is about finding a place of internal reason and purpose to make music and to commit to the process of getting really good at something that is really meaningful. And part of what that means is letting go of any hopes, aspirations, dreams, attachments to where this is going to lead you. You need to commit to this process on a day in and day out basis without even considering. I mean, I'm not, it's impossible to fully get the thought out of your mind, but you need to take every step you can to remove from the thought process um, end goals of external success and validation from others. It all has to come from within or else it's just not going to happen. And so for me, what I have done in order to do this is like right now I'm in a stretch um, where I'm working on my second ambient album and what I have said to myself, the goal I've set, because, you know, I do use YouTube for a lot of instruction. It's where I've learned everything that I learn or know about music is through YouTube. So I don't want to fully cut it out. But just as an example of something I've implemented in my life, I've set a hard rule saying, whilst I'm working on this album, no YouTube, no social media. I get to check my YouTube channel, the, the Zigzag Music Tutorials channel, to see my uploads, to check how the, the channel's doing, and to see where the growth is coming on this channel. But what I'm not allowing myself to do is go and view other videos because I know I'm going to get in that comparative mode where either I'm going to come out of it thinking, I found the secret, I found this tutorial which has unlocked the secret to success and I'm going to get really excited, or I'm going to come away thinking I could never do that and I'm going to get really depressed. So this is a way to remove comparative thoughts, to commit to the routine of accepting that I know what I know and whilst I'm working on this album, I'm not going to learn anything new by watching tutorials. It's only going to get in the way. And the best thing I can do is to just set an hour of my day to practice piano, an hour of my day to work on the ambient track, an hour of my day to work on the next YouTube upload, et cetera, et cetera. And the hour is not actually how I split my time, but you get the idea, right? That this is all about coming from within. If you're relying on watching a music video before you go to start making music, if you're relying on listening to your favorite music before you go start making music, if you're relying on checking your social media statistics before you go start making music, then it's time to do some self-reflection because these are not the way to find consistency. Um, it's about finding a middle path where you are committed to what it means long-term to get really good at something and what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis is day after day after day, finding a routine in your life where you can do the boring, where you can practice. And what I can tell you is that if you've never thought about approaching creativity from this way, if you've been someone who's consuming a lot of social media content uh, on top of music making, if you're someone who's constantly nonstop checking your Spotify streams and your you know, your YouTube subscribers and you're, you're addicted to these numbers all the time and you're comparing yourself to other musicians all the time. What I can tell you is that if you commit to changing your philosophy a little bit and really putting some time and effort into how you think about your music making and what the purpose of creativity is for you, if this is indeed something that you're really committed to the idea of getting really, really good at. And if you're not, that's totally fine. Like if you're into music casually, that's also great. I should have said that in the beginning. Like I'm really speaking to people who have the internal drive. It doesn't come externally, but you have a genuine internal drive to get really, really good at music making. And what you're going to find is that the peace and state of calm that you feel when you're practicing and working on music over time, as some of these expectations and these this pressure that you've placed on yourself to find immediate success starts to get a little bit more manageable, you're going to find that doing the boring, mundane, routine stuff of actually getting better and practicing on a day-to-day -day basis becomes the most fun you've ever had making music. And I don't know how to describe it with words because what I just said is totally paradoxical to the idea that you should be not looking for excitement when it comes to music making. But... All I can say is that with some time and practice and patience, you're going to have the feeling and you're going to know what I'm talking about if you've, never, if you've never experienced it before. If you are someone who's really good and on top of your consistency when it comes to being creative, I would love to hear any thoughts you have down in the comments below. Um, let me know if this is the kind of video that is helpful or interesting to anyone. Um, 
I'm certainly not going to do this all the time. I'll get back to sort of more traditional music making and tutorial making videos in the future. But I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found it interesting. I will catch you all next time. Take care.